Anthony Jansen was asked about his contract status ahead of their first spring training game on Saturday, and he said he's open to re-signing, and when he is healthy, he's one of the more productive catchers around Major League Baseball. But will the Blue Jays be willing to negotiate during the season, and will Jansen be willing to negotiate during the season? We'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as Ricky Tiedemann. He's getting the nod in the first game on Saturday against the Phillies, so that should be a lot of fun. We'll have that and much more coming up next. fans i'm your host peter brionis alongside host nick awesome thank you for sticking with us for this entire off season it was uh, treacherous at times there were no news and and there were no moves going down for the toronto blue jays but now we're starting to get some minor league deals that are coming in we're starting to get some internal battles in camp and, and guys are looking good they're chomping at the bit and ready to get back out there and i'm so excited for baseball i mean we're, we're what two days away now from the first game on saturday now i know it's doesn't mean anything. We'll probably see the starters for three or four innings, maybe even five, and then they're going to be out of it. And then uh, if, if you bet on that, uh, good luck to you because you're going to have an 18-year-old taking you home the rest of the way. That's usually how spring training goes. But, Nick, I'm just excited to have baseball back here. And uh, Danny Jansen had some interesting things to say. Obviously, a lot of Blue Jay fans want to see him here for the long haul. He does get injured a fair bit, but he's had his fair share of freak injuries as well that maybe if he changes a few things in his mechanics he would be able to avoid them but Nick I'm all in on the Danny Jansen train I think he's one of the best catchers in baseball when he is healthy and one of the more productive offensive players when he is healthy yeah tons of news to discuss today but before we get into it a quick reminder hit the subscribe button we're very close to 12,000 so if you're a part of that 70% who aren't subscribed scroll down and check for us and hit that button if you're excited for the Jays season to start now yeah we have a few things to go over today let's uh, focus on Jansen it's a couple days ago he spoke out in the contract up here we haven't really had the Danny Jansen or really the catcher tandem talk very much this offseason but this is going to be and they're going to play an integral part specifically Danny Jansen on this team we know how good the Jays have been when Danny Jansen has been healthy and obviously he hasn't been healthy very much but they basically asked him because he's a pending free agent after this season they asked him entering his free agent year and he says he has had conversations with the Blue Jays and then he's definitely not closing any doors but I'm continuing on and focusing on this season if it happens it happens again I'm not closing any doors but I'm focused one day at a time and he was also asked about if he was offered one and he said we talked a little bit and I think both parties agreed to carry to see what happens this year the talks have been minimal and it's become more likely that Jansen will play through this season before any long-term decisions are made now Peter I'm kind of with uh I'm kind of with you know what a lot of people are thinking regarding I would have wished they would have extended him maybe even last season obviously the injuries are a big issue but he's such a key part to this team he's 29 years old now I feel like he's been with the team forever Thomas Hall says they should absolutely be looking to extend Danny Jansen it should have happened last winter honestly and we had those discussions last winter we didn't think it was going to get to this point but what are your thoughts on this great player can't really stay healthy but we've obviously seen how good of a player he can be and will be and is when he is healthy so again what are your thoughts on this I'm excited for it. I hope they can get a contract done. I highly doubt, though, it'll be before the season starts. Yeah, it's unfortunate because um, he, he is a very productive player, but he has dealt with those injuries, and he is a catcher, so he's never going to play 162 games. doesn't matter what the scenario is. You don't need him to be healthy for the whole season, but when he does go down, it hasn't been a uh, five-game stint. It, it, yeah. it hasn't been a 10-day stint. It's been for weeks at a time, and it's been a cycle with Danny Jansen. And we're not blaming the player for getting injured. Things just happen, of course, and he's had a very bad luck, uh, a very bad run of injuries where he gets hit on the hand in his first game back. He pulls a hammy over there. So, so I don't know what it is. I think he's just snake-bitten, honestly, with the injury bug. But uh, this, this is a cycle with Danny Jansen. He does well at the beginning of the season. He he comes out firing as one of the more productive hitters in the lineup, gets injured for three, four weeks, comes back, tears it up, then gets injured again. So it's just been an unfortunate run. Luckily, the Jays have had Alejandro Kirk as well to back him up and and be that defensive presence uh, behind the plate there. But they need both of these guys healthy at all times if they want to do anything. Because when he goes down, Alejandro Kirk gets overused, and that's when his production starts to fall. Kirk has done a good job of staying healthy and staying in the lineup, so we got to give him that. But he shouldn't be catching every single day. 
having these two guys at your disposal allows you to have one catch three times a week, one catch four times a week, and I think that's the best way to go about it. Yeah, you're looking at his OPS here. I have it up on the left. The big thing you'll notice is the plate appearances, the at-bats, never had a season in the past, or since 2021 before that, uh, with above a 300 at-bats. And again, he's a great hitter. He has approaching, I mean, you think back to 2022, he was on even a more of a heater. He had an 855 OPS at the end of the season. He's solid defensively. He just can't stay healthy, and he gets, it's very unlucky. He goes down for very long, very long periods of time, whether he's getting hit with a foul ball when he's behind the uh, dish, when he's getting hit in the hand when he's hitting. It's very unfortunate, but it's good to see that he seems like he's open to an extension, and I would suspect that the the two can come to an agreement. But, Peter, it's getting a little bit worrisome with the amount of players that the Jays have yet to extend. Jansen, Bo, Vladdy, those are obviously the main ones. I'm hoping it happens soon, and I think ultimately it will maybe after this season. I can't see them letting him go, especially after the fact that they traded away Gabriel Moreno. So any quick thoughts on this before I move on to a couple other things? Yeah, it is worrisome, and, and they're probably not going to re-sign all of these players. You know, They're, they're going to have to move in a different direction eventually, and I doubt that they bring all of them back. Uh, look, let's let the season play out. Let's see how Danny Jansen performs. Let's see if he can stay on the field first and foremost because we know how good he can be when he is out there. Uh, but I, I'm very excited about this next topic that we're going to talk about here, Nick. Yeah, let's get right into it. Now there's a couple things. We'll start with the Ricky Tiedemann thing. Peter, Ricky Tiedemann, it was announced by, I think, actually Mike Wilner. It, it was Mike Wilner. Hearing that Ricky Tiedemann is going to start uh, the Blue Jays Grapefruit League opener on Saturday against the Phillies at TD Ballpark. So that should be fun. I was not expecting this. Uh, Saturday is their first game, so it's two days away. We get a Ricky Tiedemann showdown as the first, I believe the game is televised. What are your thoughts on this? Everyone watching, you're getting Ricky Tiedemann to uh, to go, and you get to watch him play, and supposedly he is throwing upper 90s. He looks absolutely amazing. I'm fired up. I'm pretty excited for this one. Uh, fun and Mike Wilner don't usually go together nope. in the same sentence, but uh, shout-out to him for breaking that news, and it will be a lot of fun. And, yeah, it's at TD Ballpark, so it'll be televised, the home game for the Blue Jays. Perfect. So excited for this one. So excited. Uh, and and I think this is a good sign going forward as well because last year we only saw Ricky Tiedemann get in a couple of games in spring training in the relief manner. They weren't starting him. Now, I don't expect him to go four or five innings here, probably just two innings, and, and then go from there, turn it over to the bullpen. But still, the fact that they have him starting means that they're probably ready to add, uh, ramp up his innings. And that should bode well towards the end of the season when he is ready to come up. Uh, I, I don't expect him to start the year with the Blue Jays, but I do expect him to be uh, maybe a September call-up. Maybe after the All-Star break, he could come up and, and provide some innings in the bullpen. So I expect them to kind of uh, give him a short leash at the beginning, not overexert him too much, and then start to ramp up as the season goes along so he, uh, so he could help the Blue Jays up for their stretch run. Yeah, I mean, looking looking good. I'm very surprised that they're doing this for the first game. They're giving us something to look forward to in the first televised games. So let us know what your thoughts are on that. And then quickly before we wrap up, uh, we have a bit of a Biggio update. And it's actually pretty big. If you haven't been paying attention, I know it hasn't. we haven't really mentioned it. A Biggio was out with an injury. And officially, as of like 20 minutes ago, I'll pop up the screenshot. He is out taking batting practice. The issue is never too serious. That's why we kind of didn't mention it in, in big detail. I think we mentioned it briefly in a video. But he is back now, Peter. And Biggio is going to play an integral role. Just wanted to throw this in there in case you guys weren't updated on that i don't know if you have any quick thoughts on this it is good to see what shoulder tendonitis because he hasn't been uh, that's why you haven't seen many pictures of him of him because he's been injured and rehabbing that he is back today which is perfect two days before the first spring training game any thoughts for a wrap up i'm really looking forward to seeing him as well i think he's gonna have a, a big year i think he's gonna have a really good year for this blue jays team and uh, just his plate discipline will will allow him to get on base and set it up for those big guys in the middle of the order and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do, probably as the everyday third baseman to start out the season. Yeah, we'll see. And I think we'll start to get some some sort of semblance of what a lineup will look like as the spring training game starts. There'll be a lot to look out for for that. We'll definitely have you covered all the way through. But that will wrap it up. If you want to check out a video from yesterday, click on your screen now and let us know what your thoughts are on all this. And like usual, we'll see you tomorrow.